This is IBM Museum. Recently I've been adding an external battery to these Dallas real-time clock modules that are on some of the PS2s and going through and you, you're you cutting into the module for the attachment of an external battery and severing the connection of the internal battery that has gone through and and just is drained at this point after so many decades in operation. These modules came out, you know, the, a lot of them have date codes that are close to 30 years ago or more in, in some instances since these, these mall, this pistol models were released in um, 1987, 1988, that have, there are several PS2s that have these modules. Now this is the Model 55SX that I've been working on rather recently, and there's an issue with it to where it was the first PS2 with a, a riser for the microchannel adapter going in place, sliding into um, vertically in this area and then you, you have three uh, adapter spaces. The bottom space uh, of course has has pretty close clearance to the Dallas module as, as it is and a lot of time these Dallas modules are modified to put the, the, the new battery holder on top of the module or in a, in a position that may actually bring it too close to the bottom side of that of that lowest adapter in the slot if you have one there. And so battery placement is is kind of an issue in this instance. The PS2 Model 30 286, it also shares this same sort of case, does have a very similar setup even though it's ISA in that case and not microchannel. Um, you still have to the, the real-time clock module is closer to the edge. There's still an, kind of an issue on, on the placement where that battery is. But this adapter support is kind of unique to the 55SX microchannel. Even the full-length microchannel slots are a little bit shorter than a, a full-length ISA adapter. So it comes off the front and has these these slots here where the the adapters slide into the the blue tab of those microchannel adapters um, have and there's kind of an interesting feature being that this is unique to the 55SX in that as I said the placement of the battery is kind of interesting to, to have that out of the way but if you look on this, this adapter support, there's a, an area on top, and you notice these on either side, and they look like actually a place where um, some terminals go in and have wires that come out um, through the back here, but basically as, as contacts for, um, for something either side here and then it has two clips on either side this one's more narrow than and this one's more wider it does have a kind of a hook to to hold something in place and if you look at this platform here the top of the platform there's this area that shows up pretty good on the camera lighting right now of being an, a little angled bump basically that's in the center here and a lot of people that have worked around the IBM PS2s, like the the Model 50, the Model 70, the Model 60, the Model 65, the Model 80, IBM had these lithium batteries that they would go through and use on those models, and they they actually had a clip in the Typically, the, the adapter support, um, there's a place that you popped in the battery. And even though on the, the 55SX and also for the third Model 3286, there's not any external battery from having these real-time clock modules. But if you look 
it's kind of interesting because just to see these, how these modules are, are set up, there's that angled piece there and it's flat on this top and then they have the, the battery terminal leads marked with the negative and positive. And this is a six volt lithium battery. So it's, it's above the voltage that you would normally have for the coin cell battery, um, almost double the voltage. And with the IBM AT, you know, IBM had that, that notion of an external battery that held the, the configuration on a, a Motorola mod uh, chip that, that didn't have a, a built-in battery to it. These modules were kind of addition. They added that battery to the Motorola design to, to provide the, the battery to run them. But as I was saying, if you if you look, it's kind of interesting because that battery clips right into place there. And it has these areas are lined up with the battery terminals for the, the negative and the positive leads to be able to go down and to run um, that real-time clock from from this external battery instead of going through and having an assembly like this. So this might even be a very good position to have that um, the the battery for this uh, module. And I was even thinking of modifying that platform or having something up here with a little bit of lead that that goes down. Um, to to the the real time clock module, this cable here is for the for the speaker, and by going through and unplugging the lead from the the front of the riser, you're able to go through and clear like the the power on password and things like that for these for these malls as well. But I just thought it was really interesting that that it has this you know. A, a place for those external batteries as well on the 55 S SX, even though that was not really um, that this big external battery didn't come into play on these units. It's interesting that IBM still designed a place for that battery to be held on these units. I don't believe this case was really used for anything otherwise um, in this design or, or any other reason that IBM wouldn't have intended uh, or had that in place for some other mall that maybe used the same case. This case did, um, was carried over, the mall 3286 used it, there was the 55SX that had it, and then the, a replacement for the 55SX called the 53SLC2 also use the case, um, but that they all had those real-time clock modules. They, they with the with the internal battery, they never had the external battery in that case. Just something to think about. If you do like this video, please like it, and you could always welcome to subscribe to my channel. There's many more videos I'll have with the. Uh, with unique content like this, kind of showing the ins and outs on the IBM systems I have, including the PS2 line, some of the um, ways to keep those systems running in the modern day and age by going through and modifying the real-time clock modules and adding the batteries to, to keep these things functional. That's all I have for today. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.